Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, today, uh, as you probably know from the intro, I am going to be doing a little make a mohair dress with me. And it's gonna be like a two for one special because um, I've made two different mohair dresses, two different designs, and um, they're both pretty simple designs, but I wanted to do both because I did a poll on my Instagram story, as I do, and um, a lot of people said that they wanted to see a midi length one. Um, so instead of just choosing one, I decided to do both. And like I said, they're both pretty simple designs, so um, pretty beginner friendly, um, but give you very different silhouettes. So let's dive into it. First of all, I wanna just kind of address like where I get my mohair because I know um, it's kind of elusive. Like a lot of people are like, can't find it at Joann's, can't find it at Michael's, can't find it at like normal yarn stores. So the first place that I would go if you are looking for mohair is like your local small business yarn shop because I get a lot of my yarns and a lot of my mohairs and mohair blends from my favorite yarn shop. It's called Darn It Anyway. It's in Stillwater, Minnesota. So, one of the first places that you can look is one of your small business yarn stores and most likely they'll have it. Um, if not, I also get a lot of my mohairs from lovecrafts.com. Um, not sponsored, Lovecrafts sponsor me. But um, <laughs> if you are on a budget and wanna buy in bulk, that's where I would go for that kind of thing. So today I'm gonna be using yarn and colors in the shade rosé. It's 25% mohair, 25% wool, and 50% acrylic. So it's a blend is what I'll be using for my first dress. So the first dress is this green one that I made. And it has a V neckline, ties on the top to adjust. All right, so for materials, for the first dress that I'm gonna be making, you will need a yarn. Um, you could use a different like lace weight yarn if you wanted to, but th these specifically are gonna be mohair dresses. So um, some kind of fluffy mohair if you want. Then I'm gonna be using a 10 millimeter hook. Uh, I find that it makes this like really pretty airy look to it um, that I prefer for like my layered pieces. So hook, some scissors. You can use stitch markers if you want, um, they're optional. I personally will just use from memory what number um, to chain or to stitch to, but you can use stitch markers if you don't wanna count out every time. And as far as how much yarn you're gonna need, it's gonna vary a lot depending on what size you are, what type of yarn you get. Um, Personally, for what I am using, and I'm a size medium, I use about 50 grams, um, which about 450 yards. Um, like I said, it's gonna be pretty hard to gauge how much you'll need. Um, it will depend on your size and also what kind of yarn. In terms of time, I would say these dresses are really fast to make. Um, I made the green one in probably a couple hours, like especially since you're using such a big hook, they work up really fast. A really nice way to make like, a beautiful layering piece without taking forever on it. This pink yarn is what I'm gonna be using and I prefer to use two strands of mohair yarn so that one, it works up faster, two, it creates like a really beautiful visual. I just like the way it looks. And three, it holds together more because mohair is usually very thin, so. Since I'm using really big stitches, I think if I just use one strand, it would be um, kind of breakable, more fragile um, and delicate. So I'm gonna be using two strands and because it's a dress, I know for sure I'm gonna need more than one ball of yarn. So I will be using a center pull from each of them since I am obsessed with center pulls. And I don't care if it destroys the entire ball of yarn and sometimes it does. The thing about mohair is that it's so fluffy, I guess. I don't know what the word would be. It tangles up on itself pretty easily. 
So definitely watch out for that. It's also almost impossible to frog. So don't mess up. I'm just kidding, you can mess up, but it is it is really hard to frog mohair yarn. I saw like a hack. Um, I can't remember who did it for the life of me. Um, but the hack is if you want to frog a piece that is made of mohair, um, put it in like a freezer bag, a Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer for a few hours and then take it out and frog it. And since it's cold, so the reason that it sticks to itself um, is apparently static electricity, I think. I think that's what they said. So freezing it takes the static out of it. I don't know if that's true. I don't actually um, know if I'm remembering it correct at all. But yeah, so I did try that once and it worked really well. If you're ever having trouble um, frogging mohair, stick it in the freezer for a few hours. Slip knot. We're gonna start with the underbust, work up, and then flip it over and work down until you reach your desired length. I'm gonna chain the measurement that gets it from like straight under my armpit. That will be the sides around the largest part of your bust. And you can pull this tight Mine is gonna be 24 chains. What we're doing is it will eventually need to fit actually under your bust, but in order to get it on, you'll need it to be able to pass over the largest part of your torso. So I have 24. If you have an odd number, you'll want to chain one more to make it even. You want this first chain to be an even number. So I have 24. Now I'm going to double that. So you just did the front. You'll need also to do the back. So I have 24, even number, for my front chain. Now I'm going to chain 24 more. Okay, so I chained 24 for the front, chained 24 for the back. I ended up with a total of 48 chains that will go all the way around. So at this point, you'll want to wrap it around and make sure that it will be able to fit over your bust. Don't make it too tight or you won't be able to put the dress on. Your first chain was even, second chain was even. So this number at the end should be divisible by four. So 24 and 24, 48, and that is divisible by four will make 12. That's the most math we'll be doing, I promise. So, all right, next step is to straighten out your chain and slip stitch into your first chain. Okay, so now you've got a circle, chain number that is divisible by four. So now you're gonna chain three. I'm gonna put a stitch marker on to show you kind of the math. My foundation chain is 48, divided by four is 12. That's the size of my panels. So I have four panels, 12 stitches wide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Stitch marker in the 12th stitch. We're gonna be decreasing at the start and end of each panel so that we get triangles. Beginning, we're going to triple crochet two together. You will triple crochet across until you have two left and then decrease into your stitch marker. Okay, so I just did my triple crochets across until there are two stitches left one and then my stitch marker stitch so now i'm going to decrease in this into these last two stitches this is what our first panel looks like now you're going to continue to do that across and up so chain three decrease your first two stitches triple crochet across until you have two stitches left Okay, I have two stitches left. Now I'm going to place a decrease into my last two stitches. Okay. So as you can see, it's like slowly starting to make a triangle. Um, you're gonna continue this. So I've gotten to this row where you see I have four stitches 
then you won't do any normal triple crochets in the middle, you just decrease and decrease. And then for my last row, I just have two stitches. You just do one decrease. Okay, and this is what it should look like. Now, this is the way, once again, I say this a lot, but this is the way that I like to do it. And obviously you can do it however you want, um, but I am going to slip stitch down the side of one of my panels to start my next one. Cause I don't like to weave in a lot of ends. Um, so if you want, you can fasten this off and then tie on right here. But I don't really wanna do that because I don't like ends, like I said. So I am just gonna chain one, place three slip stitches into the side of every one triple crochet. Okay, so I'm back at the bottom. I just did three slip stitches into this first row. So I'm going to slip stitch into the next available stitch. So now you finished off one panel. You're going to continue what you just did four times. Three more times, so four times total. <laughs> four panels. I'm going to chain three, triple crochet two together. Once again, you can place stitch markers for every single one if you want, but I just kind of memorized like what I did for my first panel. Um, so it's up to you. And I just finished my second panel. So I'm just gonna check in with you guys to show you what it should be looking like at this point. It's kind of like a cute little bra top. But the front and the back are gonna be symmetrical. So every side will look the same. As you can see, this is the first panel I did. You can see the slip stitches down the side. Then I did my second panel, slip stitch down the side. I'm gonna do two more panels and that should bring you around to your very beginning. And getting used to working with mohair if you've never worked with it before is kind of interesting. I mean, I know when I first started working with it, I it took me a while to just get used to um, how the yarn feels. Like I've used um, lace weight yarns before and really thin yarns before, but the slipperiness, I think, of mohair is really something to get used to. I also think that just fall in general is the perfect time for like layering. So I'm so, so excited to just like layer long sleeves and like collared shirts and stuff and with these dresses. I think they'll look absolutely gorge. This, gorgeous. I just finished slip stitching down the side of my fourth panel and now I'm going to slip stitch into my very first stitch. Up front and back, cutesy bralette type thing with four panels. Now what we're going to do is work up, make our ties on the top of both sides. Single crochet up the side of my first panel. This is my fourth panel. I just slip stitch down it. To get to my first panel, I'm going to place three single crochets in the side of each triple crochet until I get to the top. Okay. I just got to the top of my first panel. Now you're going to be chaining um, however long you want the bows to be. If you want like super long bows, that could be really cute. If you want short bows, just have them like, just ties, I don't know. You can do however long you want. I think I'm gonna do about 30 centimeters. So I chained 30, that's about how long I want my ties to be. Now I'm going to slip stitch back down it.
Okay, I'm at the bottom of my chain again. Now I'm going to slip stitch into this top stitch. <coughs> okay. Now, you can see this is where I already slip stitched it when I was making my panel. Just go ahead and place a single crochet in every slip stitch. You're actually gonna go all the way down this side, this side of the panel, and then all the way up the next side of the panel. Okay, so I'm at the top of my second panel. Here's the tie I just did. I did single crochets down and back up. Now I'm at the tip of this one. I'm going to chain exactly how much I did for my first one, slip stitch back down. Okay, I'm just finishing single crocheting back down the side of my fourth panel. And once I get back to my beginning, I'm gonna slip stitch into the first one and then tie off. Now what you have is a cute little bralette with ties on the top. So you could leave it like this if you really wanted to. If you just wanted a cute little bralette for layering, then you got one. You can try this on if you want to make sure that everything's fitting correctly before you move on. All right, what we're gonna be doing next is from here down, the skirt portion. So you can pretty much tie onto wherever you want. Um, if you're worried about like a seam showing, you can't really see the seam at all. So what I'm gonna do is start from the right side seam and just tie onto this like middle stitch. Okay, chain four. You're gonna triple crochet all the way around the bottom of it until you get back to the beginning and then slip stitch into the fourth stitch. And back to the very first triple crochet. You're going to slip stitch into the fourth stitch there so if you have um a bigger bigger hips and a bigger butt and thighs than like the top of you then i would suggest doing an increase row that's what i did um, if you are pretty like similar on the top and the bottom and maybe you'd want it like a little bit more fitted or anything like that it's going to be different for everyone because of our different bodies obviously but um i'm gonna be doing an increase row because i don't want it to be too tight around my hips so my increase row is going to be every eighth stitch so seven normal triple crochets and then two triple crochets into the eighth stitch all the way around okay then this is the end of my increase row you slip stitch into the fourth stitch from here on out, you're basically just gonna keep doing rows until you reach the length that you desire. So if you want it to be a midi, you can make it long, you can make it a maxi, you can make it a mini dress, like however many rows you want. Uh, I personally am gonna keep it kind of short because my other style of mohair dress that I'm doing is longer but um, it's totally up to you. So just keep doing rows until you reach your desired length. Oh my gosh, I think it's so cute at this stage. If you wanted to, if you like didn't have enough yarn or if you just wanted to make a top instead of a dress, how adorable, like a little baby doll top with these bows, stop. Wait, it's actually really cute this way. I'm gonna keep going, but if you wanna make top, I wanna see your top version so badly. And I would recommend trying it on like multiple times to make sure like if this, is not like as tight as you want it or if it's not as loose as you want it add an increase row or 
a decreased row or whatever to um, fix that. I am two, three, four, five, six, seven rows in, and I'm not sure how many I'm gonna do. So let's continue. I've done 10 rows and I tried it on and this is how long I want it to be. Perfect length fits right on me. Okay, once you have finished however many rows you're going to do, you're just going to single crochet along the bottom of it just to make a nice edge. Alright, I ended my single crochet row and slip stitched into my first single crochet and then fasten off, weave in your ends. This is how cute it ended up being. I'm in love with the color and how it turned out. So uh, since this is a two-parter, next week I'll be doing a tutorial for the midi or maxi dress and just as a little teaser this is her you cannot really see her because she's so long but i will be um putting that video up next week but i really hope that you enjoyed the first part of this series i'm having a lot of fun doing it post what i make get some positive feedback about it and then make a video um it's kind of just how i choose what <laughs> to make or what videos to make so if you have an idea um, go ahead and tell me that comment that um whatever you want thank you so much for watching go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss the video next week for the second part of this series please 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 once again tag me in all your creations it makes my heart so happy um to see the things that you guys make from my videos at lucylane.crochet on instagram don't forget to subscribe because that video is coming next week don't forget i love you bye